ScalaFX includes a number of controls that function in a kind of button-like way so that users can click them to make things happen or some of them are actually toggles where clicking them sets them into one state and then clicking them again takes them out. These types are the button, which we've already seen before, a checkbox, a radio button, and a toggle button. So we'll look at those. We'll write some code that uses those different types. C O N T controls dot Scala. We need to have all of our imports again. Scala FX dot includes dot underscore. Uh, Scala FX dot application dot JFX app. Scala FX dot scene dot scene. Scala FX dot scene dot control dot and then we are going to use button. We are going to use checkbox. We're going to use radio button. We're going to use toggle button. We're going to use something called a I'll go ahead and toggle group. And to help give us some feedback on stuff, we'll probably wind up using the label that we saw previously as a text style control. When we make this interactive, we've already seen that there's a good chance we're going to need ScalaFX.Event.Action Event. Okay, we'll stop there now for the imports and start writing the application. So as we've done before, we'll make a new JFX app. We'll call main on it. Inside of here, we will set the stage to a new JFX app primary stage. Inside of the stage, we'll set the title to be button controls. And then we can set the scene of the stage to be a new scene Let's see, how about we make this one be 400 pixels across and 600 pixels high? Because we're going to put several of these controls in there. At the very top of this, we'll actually put a label so that we can use that label to get feedback. So let's go with val label equals new label. We'll just give it the string feedback to start with. And labels layout x is 20. Layout y will also be 20 to start with. And actually, we're not intending to change it for this particular application. We need to make a button. We've seen buttons before. So button equals new button and we really don't have much that we're doing here. A button. We're going to set its location to 20 and 30 beyond the last one, which will be 50. As I've done before, I'm going to set the content to be a list of these things, our label and our button. And we'll go ahead and run this real quick just to make sure that we don't have, oh, I am missing an equal sign, so that we don't have things like that. I always strongly recommend to students that they run their program fairly frequently to make sure that they don't have any uh, typos or other errors in it because it turns out that the longer you wait, the more of those accumulate, the harder it is to, to find them all. If you wind up going over here and doing a run every 10, 20, maybe 30 lines, then you know very quickly when you've messed something up and you can deal with your problems one at a time. 
So these are all things that we've seen before. Now let's throw in some things that we haven't seen before. How about a checkbox? So I'm going to create two checkboxes. I'll just call them CB. CB1 is a new checkbox of, we'll just make the string check one, and we'll do another one for two. We need to set the positions for these. CB1 dot layout X is 20, and the layout Y will be 80. Copy that. 20 again, and then 111. Let's save. Let's run. Make sure I'm using the checkbox correctly. Oh, they're not appearing because I have not added them into the list. CB1, CB2. There we go. So checkboxes. We can click them. We can have both of them clicked however we want. Okay. There are also radio buttons. So let's make some radio buttons. I'm going to make three radio buttons. So now RB1 is a oops, new radio button. Radio 1. And we'll set rb1.layoutx to 20. And layout y will be 140. Copy those, paste, paste. So the second one will be rb2, 2, 2, 2, 2 3. 3, 3, 3. And let's change the y's on these. So that'll be 170. And this will be 200. Let's add those into the GUI. And see what this looks like. Now, most of the time that you have radio buttons in programs, you want it so you can only click one of these. Okay, and that having one on will turn the other ones off. That was why we included this toggle group. A toggle group is a group of buttons where you can only select one of them. Okay, So in order to make one of these, we'll put create one of these for our radio buttons. Val toggle one is a new toggle group and then we will say toggle one dot toggles and we can set that to a sequence of the things that we want to uh, have so we can only set one of the one of them so I'll make a list that has RB1 RB2 and RB3 now if I run the program Assuming I've done that appropriately. If I click radio one, when I click two, one turns off and I can only select one of these at a time. Okay. There is a very similar type of thing called a toggle button. And I'm actually going to go ahead and just copy 12 lines and every place that says radio button I am going to change it to toggle button and then change these to say toggle okay instead of RB these will be TB We need to continue spacing them out. So this one will be 230. This one will be 
260 and this one will be 290. We'll make toggle 2 for our second toggle group and change all of these to T's again. Nope, I know that won't work because I have not yet added them into my GUI. So I just have my radio button. Let's go ahead. One, TB2, TB3. That will add them in. And we can see what a toggle button looks like. The toggle button looks like a normal button, except the normal button, when I click it while it's down, it's in the down state, and when I release it in the up state, the toggle button stays down, but only one of them can stay down at a time. Notice that I can release it, which is different from the radio button. Once I've clicked one of these radio buttons, I can't unclick it. So one of them will always be selected. Whereas with the toggle buttons, I can basically unselect things. So that's the darker state where it's down. That's the lighter state when it's up. So that gives you the basics of creating, placing, you know, how we can make these different button controls. We'll come back and we'll look at how we can make the user interact with them as well.